Kling AI, which is probably the best AI video generator that's available to the public today, is finally out worldwide, and they've just released their pro plan. So let's talk about how to access it, the basics of using it, and if it's worth it to spend those five bucks a month for the pro plan. To get started, head to klingai.com or hit that link in the description and maybe tap the like button while you're down there too. And once you've created your account, you will be directed to this discover page, which is all of the most liked videos that have been created on Kling. This is a great place to come for inspiration or just to you know figure out what works best on Kling. Looking through here, we can see there's a lot of animals and buildings as well as other inanimate objects. Worth noting though, is that pretty much all the videos you'll see here on the homepage are using professional mode for which a paid plan is required to use. So like you'll see later in this video, you'll have a hard time getting something that's as good of quality on a free plan. Okay, now let's dive into the video generator. So keep in mind here that on a free plan, you get 66 free credits every 24 hours, which is enough to make about six videos. So, you know, let's try to make them count. So we have our prompt box here and some suggestions from Kling on what to produce. Just like we said before, it looks like they're suggesting a lot of animal videos and videos of objects. So that's probably what it's best at. We've got also a creativity slider, which generally you want to leave at 0.5, which is the default because you know that's what most of the videos on the explore page were at uh, which probably means it's it's the best practice then down here you've got camera movement which as you may have guessed describes how the camera should move they give you a lot of good options here which all can really impact how your creation turns out so let's give all of them a try and see how they impact the final output but first let's add some negative prompts down here uh, this is basically what we don't want to see, which we don't want to see any blur, distortion, disfigurement, low quality, grainy, or abstract videos. Okay, and now let's go ahead and run that prompt with all the different camera movements, and then I'll show you the results here. Okay, so to start, we've got the default camera movement, which is just no movement, uh, which tends to look the best when you know you start to introduce movement to it. Uh, sometimes the subject can get distorted a little bit. So most of the videos you see on the explore page are actually just still, but you know, sometimes it's best to have the camera move even with that fact. So let's move on to horizontal movement, which is, you know, you can imagine the camera sliding from left to right. So if the subject is moving, the camera will move with the subject, or if the subject is staying still like we have here, um, it'll just move past the subject and it actually here it created a whole new uh, subject to focus on. So that's interesting. Then we've got vertical movement, which uh, is similar to, you know, the horizontal where the camera is actually moving, uh, sliding upwards, almost as if it's like in an elevator, which actually worked out pretty cool here. Then we've got zoom, which is fairly self-explanatory. A positive number is going to be a zoom in and vice versa for zoom out. Really cool video there. Then we've got pan, which is the camera staying stationary, but it's actually tilting downward or upward, depending on the value you give it. Then we've got tilt, which similar to pan is going to be a stationary camera where it's just turning left to right or right to left. Then a roll is pretty self-explanatory here. It's going to be a either clockwise or counterclockwise rotation. And that's turned out really good here. We didn't get much distortion at all. And then these are actually brand new, these master shots. And they provide a very cool kind of contemporary surreal feeling where like here you've got move down and zoom out. So the camera is moving down while zooming out and then you got move forward and zoom up. So the zooming is, is happening towards the top of the frame uh, while the camera moves in. And it looks like it's providing like almost as if someone is walking towards the subject, which is very cool. Then you've got the move right and zoom in. So that's it looks like more of a tilt than a horizontal movement, but maybe a bit of both there where the camera is actually moving and turning at the same time. Also very cool. And then basically just the opposite, you know, move left, zoom in. And those were the camera movements. 
Now let's go ahead and test out the image to video feature. So I've got this photo of some hot air balloons hovering over the city of Cappadocia in Turkey. And let's say I'd like to add some movement to it, maybe you know make them look like they're ascending into the sky. So I'll upload the photo here and for the prompt, I'll put hot air balloons ascending into the sky. I'll keep all the other settings as default and also put the same negative prompts as I did before. And here's the result. It looks pretty good. Um, they're not really ascending, more you know, just kind of floating around um, and it's a bit blurry, but overall pretty good. Okay, now that we've covered the basics here, I'm gonna go ahead and subscribe to the paid plan and try the same prompts as well as the premium features and we'll see if it's worth it. So I'm gonna go for the monthly plan, which is $5 a month and gets you 660 credits, which is 66 videos on standard mode. And it looks like right now they're only accepting PayPal and wallet payments, which also appears to be PayPal. So I guess we'll use PayPal. And there we go. Uh, it took about 30 seconds here, but my payment is processed and I've got my credits. So heading back to the text to video generator uh, and I'll check professional mode here. Professional videos cost 35 credits, three and a half times more than standard. So I guess let's hope it's three and a half times better because that means that that are $5 only bought 18 professional quality videos. So with that said, let's give it a go here, starting with the no camera movement option. And it looks very similar. I'm not seeing much improvement on that one. Uh, I'm thinking the improvement might come with the other camera movements. So I also tried tilt. Okay, not much improvement on that one either. It's, I'm still seeing some distortion and such. Uh, I also tried the, a couple of the master shots. Uh, this one's move down and zoom out. Still, it's very, you know, it's, you can tell that it's, that it's AI here. So not much improvement. And then here's another master move left and zoom in. Okay, so based on that, I would say that the pro plan is definitely not worth it. It seems we're getting very similar results, but one thing the pro plan does offer is in the image to video, it allows you to add an end frame. So let's say you wanted to do something like, you know, having Deadpool running at a wall and crashing through it. So I generated a couple frames here, our start and end frame on Leonardo, and let's upload those here and it looks like it's gonna cost 35 credits for every time we test this so I'm sure they'll fix this but right now it looks like you're not able to test things in standard mode so every time you're gonna do an end frame you have to spend the 35 credits but I'll go ahead and launch this here and after a few minutes looks a little lackluster in the results department I was hoping that it would be able to interpret that the camera needed to tilt because you're not actually able to add a uh, camera movement parameter in uh, image to video here. So yeah, nothing to write home about on the adding an end frame. Still some work to do there, it seems. But tell me for you, is Kling Pro worth it? For me, it seems to depend on what you're hoping to use it for. But for $5, 18 generations seems very expensive to me, especially since the results are so similar going from the free version. But if you want your videos to look as real as possible, or you want to play around with end frames on image to video and you can part with the five dollars then it seems the paid version is the way to go but hey if you found this video helpful do me a huge favor and subscribe to the channel and generate a click on that like button and i will see you next time